What's up, guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today, we're looking at Psalm 41, 42, and 43 here in the Old Testament, which is actually a transition period because there's five books in the Psalms. I don't know if you know that, but there's five books. If you've got your Bible open, you'll see right before Psalm 42, it says book two. Now, book one was mostly about the life of David. If we remember, basically all of these Psalms were written by David, with a couple of exceptions. Um, now we're going to move into a different time when um, maybe a lot of these were written later on. David writes some of them, of course, uh, but a lot of them are written by different people. We see the sons of Korah, that's the people who are going to write um, chapter 42, and, and some others, but we're going to run into them, and the perspective is a little bit different because sometimes it's looking back on David's life, where before we were obviously living in the time of David as he was speaking. So anyway, Psalm 41, it's the last one of David here in book one. And what it talks about is how God is good and gracious to the just man or to the just woman. What is the just person? The one who walks in integrity. Now, the reason that's important, and I think the reason this is here at the end of this book is because I want you to think back through how many of the Psalms were about the just person complaining to God saying, God, why don't you act? God, why don't you do something? God, please do something. My hope is in you. How many times have you heard that in these first 41 chapters? I mean, you've heard it a lot, right? Well, I think what this is doing as a capstone to the end of book one is showing that the truth is God will vindicate those righteous people, even if it's not in this life. I mean, think about how much in this first book we already referenced the resurrection. I think of Psalm 16. We've already looked at how, um, where, where it says, you will not abandon my soul to the pit, to Sheol. And we saw how that points forward to Jesus. But also it shows that even in David's life, there's going to be something where he's going to be vindicated, even sometimes for, for some of these people right after death. And that's how it have to happen um, with us today too. So anyway, uh, Psalm 41 talks about how God keeps those people with integrity. He keeps them um, and he does not let them completely tr be trampled by and he doesn't let their reputation be ruined forever. Um, he's going to justify them or vindicate them in the end. Now, Psalm 42, perhaps a little bit more famous. This is the beginning of book two. Talks about um, with this poetic language, how much the author wants to know God. He says, as a deer pants for streams of flowing water, um, my soul pants for you, O God. I just want to be with God. I just want to know God more. I want to hear from God. I want to be with God's people. I want all those things. I want that so badly. He says next, when shall I come to appear before God? I want to be in God's presence. It's not just like far off presence. I want to be up close and personal with God. And now the funny thing is, as we read this, you might say, okay, well, they felt that way. I don't feel that way so much. Or you might say, I do feel that way. Well, I want you to distinguish the different people and the different reactions to Psalm 42. I think the reason that you would want to go before God is because you know God intimately and you know God personally. And God has been good to you and you have gotten to know him more and more. And maybe if not, maybe it means that you don't have that close relationship with God. And what we see here is at the beginning of all these DVR snapshots looking at Psalms, I said, I want the Psalms to start to educate the way that you think about God and educate the way you talk to God and pray to God. This should be one of the things that you pray through and think about. I want to know God more. And even sometimes when you don't feel like it, this is a good time for us to look to Psalm 42 where it says, um, why are you cast down, O my soul? We're going to see how Psalm 42 and 43 are connected here. But that phrase comes up again um, right here. It comes up at the end of chapter uh, 42 and at the end of chapter 43 where the author says why why are you sad that's basically what it means but he's talking to himself why are you cast down oh my soul hope in god direct your focus to him stop focusing on these other things stop putting your trust on these other things put your trust in the lord and stop being downcast because you don't need to be because your hope can be in the lord and god like we read in psalm 41 will vindicate the righteous now psalm 43 is a different song it's Really, it's really close connected. Um, there's even some repetition here, like we said before. But verse 3 talks about how it's important for us to look to God for guidance instead of trying to guide our own lives. Now, Psalm 43.3 is actually the theme verse, really, for Compass Bible Church. You might have seen it on some of the stickers or the license plate frames or whatever you've seen it on. But if you've seen it there, you know, and you might have wondered, like, what's that verse about? This verse is right here in Psalm 43.3. It says, send out your light and your truth. And let them lead me. 
let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Basically, what it means is we want God to be our guide. We want to turn to him for guidance. We want to turn to him for reliance on truth, not our own thinking, our own philosophizing or whatever. We want to look to God for all of that. And hopefully that is the cry of your heart as you read these Psalms today. So let's look at the New Testament. We're here in Acts chapter 24. What we're going to see is Paul is before a couple of important people. First of all, there's an argument that's made against Paul. You might notice that at the beginning. You're going to see how these Jewish people try to bring a charge against Paul. And then Felix, this Roman, this governor, gives Paul the floor and he lets him defend himself. So what he's going to do is explain that he's on trial for the sake of the resurrection. And also, he's going to talk about how he doesn't abandon God. He doesn't abandon the Old Testament. In fact, it says, I do everything, I believe everything, laid down in the law and the prophets. That right there is shorthand for the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. Paul says, I don't, I didn't come here to, you know, turn over the Old Testament. I don't want to move away from the Old Testament. A lot of people think that today, like, well, Old Testament's not that important. That's not true. Paul said, I come and I believe everything in the law and the prophets. And in fact, that's the Bible Paul was using to teach from. Think about it. I mean, that's what he was teaching from. He was teaching from Psalms and Isaiah and Deuteronomy and all of those books. But he defends himself. And how he defends himself is by explaining that he is not creating something new. He's just trusting in God's Messiah, Jesus, the the Messiah that we should have seen coming from passages like Psalm chapter 2 where he's the anointed one from God and anyway so he says that and then Felix actually um, had a, a rather accurate knowledge of the way and that's what it says in verse 22 so he starts asking questions and he and his wife actually who was a Jewish lady which is interesting so he's um, seems to be a Gentile married a Jewish lady um, they actually talked to Paul for a while but he's kept in prison for two years and I think one of the reasons is as he was reasoning with him and and as Paul was preaching to Felix Felix was alarmed and that might sound weird like you might not use that phrase today to talk about how you feel but think about what that means they were having these gospel conversations and at a certain point Felix got alarmed he was like whoa whoa because I think he realized like Festus is going to realize in a couple chapters that Paul saying you need to believe in the gospel not just me but you need to do it too and maybe he was starting to be convinced and he pushed back when he felt that conviction I think it's a helpful reminder for us. I mean, as Paul is about to preach the gospel to important people, we just need to know that everyone is just a person and everyone needs to believe the gospel and we need to present it to everyone. It doesn't matter if they're they're rich or poor or famous or unimportant or whatever. Um, they need to hear the gospel and they need to turn to Christ. And Felix did not want to do that. He got alarmed once he realized they were talking about him, not just about philosophies in general. So it's an important thing for us to keep in mind as we study this today, that we need to have the boldness of Paul to be willing to share the gospel with anybody, even if they're scary or even if they're important. So thanks for reading with us. We'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot.